There we go. I got the, the mic. Alright, so 
this next one, we actually want this one to show up. So, uh, Ronnie, hit the next slide. One more. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. I was just going to show you guys a couple of pictures of me uh, from my career, but my name is Quincy Maricua. I'm in my 11th year of uh, Major League Soccer, so I'm, I'm an 11-year pro. Um, I've been in the MLS since 2009, and uh, yeah, year 11, wow, it's going by pretty quick, huh? It's a lot. I've learned a lot, but more importantly, I've made a whole lot of mistakes along the way, and there's definitely a reason why I'm standing in front of you here today, and it has a whole lot more to do with learning from your mistakes than I think many of you guys believe at this point in time. Um, I'd say out of all the people in this room who actually know what it takes to play at this level and maintain um, the what is necessary to play at this level is just a few. I heard a couple of people who are playing pro. Bill himself here is already in what year? I am in year 10. Year 10, so he's in year 10 yeah. as well too. So, um, at Perfect Soccer, our motto is um, others will tell you what they think, but here at Perfect Soccer we tell you what we know. Right? Because we only want to share with you what we've learned from our own personal experience and what we've done for ourselves. And I think um, the, the person who's best served to help you get to where you all, I heard 100% of you all, want to be or go, would definitely be from people who've done it for themselves. Would that be fair? Yes? Yes. yes. No? Yes. Yes? Okay. So who in here wants to do this for themselves or be able to go even further than Bill and myself one day. Good. So, my question to you now is, what does it take, and what is the most important thing above all else? If you could only pick one thing to be good at, or to do, or to do well, or what it actually takes to get here, where I am right now, where Bill is right now, what's the one thing that you think it takes? Hands up. Right yeah, what does it take? Work hard? Okay, hard work. Failure? Okay. Mm -hmm. Practice? That's good, this part of it. What else? Commitment? I like that. Determination? Okay. Commitment, determination, those are good. A good mindset? I like that. Ooh, someone got it right there. That is it right there. What's your name? Gabby. Gabby. Now there's not there's not one answer to everything, and all the answers you guys said are, are part of it. But for me, and I can only speak from my experience, Gabby, you go, you want yourself a soccer ball right there, okay? okay. Yes, work hard, work hard is good. Work hard is part of it. He has a lot of you when you start out on this journey, guys, and I think when you when I can look back and we can go into a lot of Thermodynamics, physics, relativity, I, I'm, I'm going to keep this talk as short as possible, right? But the main thing is, when you get older, and something that younger people don't fully understand, you want to click over a little bit more here to get the take, um, is most older people like myself, when we're speaking to you, we're making a really big mistake, and that mistake that we're making is we're speaking to you from experience, right? And the problem is, from your perspective, you don't have the same experience as us. So when we're using certain words, you don't understand them how we mean them. Because we put our hand on the stove, we burned them before, right? You've never put your hand on the stove, you've never burned your hand, so you don't know what we're talking about when we're talking from experience. So, what I want to make sure I do is I always speak to your perspective. And looking back on my career and understanding from big picture what it was that got me here and what it is that gets and keeps all the top level players at this point in time is 1,000%, what was your name again? Gabby. Gabby, what Gabby said is the right mindset, is mentality, right? If there's only one thing you can focus on and one thing that you can do and one thing that is in your control, it is your mentality and how willing you are to developing it, being mindful of it, maintaining it, and learning as much as you can from everything around you, adapt or die. Like I said, there's gonna be mistakes, there's gonna be problems along the way, hard work, commitment, dedication, all of those things are necessary and required, but all of that means nothing if you do not have the right mentality. All of that will crumble. So mentality is the foundation of everything that I discuss. Mentality is the, uh, is the foundation of everything that I preach, 
And mentality is the thing that I speak to you from your perspective, knowing that you do not have the experiences that I have, correct? So one, another thing that is also diff difficult for older people to understand when speaking to younger people is knowing that you see us doing things that we tell you not to do. Is that true? Is that frustrating? Why is it frustrating? Because you're being a hypocrite. That is true. Any other reasons? Yep. You're not being fair. So then I got a question for you guys. Do you think they're being fair? When you're older, do you think you'll appreciate them being a hypocrite right now? Yes? Yeah? Then why are you angry about it right now? He said no. You will not? You won't be happy about it? Okay. So for those of you who think you will be happy with it when you're older, why are you angry about it right now? If that's what you believe. Unless you're being a hypocrite. Oh, okay. Mentality. Mentality. So how many of you had the right mentality before I asked that question? None. Well, he, had a, he had one. So what, what, what did you think? What do you think? <laughs> why, why, are you still, why are you still frustrated even though you know when you're older you might thank your parents for it? Okay, I got you. 
So, the, do things not go your way sometimes? Yeah. Do you com- do you get angry and complain when things don't go your way? Uh-huh. When things go your way, are you really happy about it? Yeah. Do you take all the credit for it when things go your way? I uh-huh. don't uh, no. Who do you give credit to? <laughs> but you did the work, though.
So does anyone know what self-awareness is? Being aware of yourself. And what does that mean? What does being aware of yourself allow you to do that being unaware of yourself prevent you from doing? Think. You can think and not be aware. Think for yourself. How do you know if you're thinking for yourself? He said, you have your own thoughts and not the thoughts of someone else. Well, how do you know your thoughts are your own? No, that's good. Yep. Or, or only work on your strengths. We can talk more about that in a minute. I like that. What else? Okay. Knowing who you are 
around you, your personality, and how do you know who you are?
you said you're unhappy, and you said you're willing to do what's necessary to overcome and do the work necessary to get to where it is that you want to go. So what are you going to do to hold yourself accountable to what it is that you, that you said you want to achieve? So what things do you need to put in place? Um, for instance, I hate running. I've always hated running. I've never enjoyed running. But soccer is like 98% running, right? But if I want to play this sport and I want to do this, running is not an option. So I have to be honest with myself. If I don't force myself to run, I'm not going to run. But is running necessary to be good at this sport? Yes. Yes. So what initiative do I need to take to make sure that I run? Start running? But what if I know myself? I'll, I'll lie to myself and tell myself I don't need to run. So what do I, need, what do, I do then? Yeah. Don't listen to your emotions. Don't listen to your emotions. Okay. I'm not going to tell you guys not to. I'm not going to tell you guys to do that, right? But in this instance, would it be the smart thing to not listen to my emotions? Yes. Right. Why is that? Yep. Because the, my emotions are getting the best of me, right? And why do? How do I know that my emotions are getting the best of me in that moment? Correct. I don't have the right mentality. I have a mentality that's robbing my future self of my goals. Yes? When you know the things that you need to do and put into place to get to where you want to go, and you don't do them, you're robbing yourself, your future self, of your goals. No one other than you. And what most people do is once they figure out that they've robbed themselves of their goals, they blame everyone else around them for why they didn't get there. My coach was, was me. My coach didn't do enough. My parents didn't believe in me. My friends held me back. If they didn't do this, social media that. I'm here to tell you, don't make any excuses. No excuses, okay? You take personal responsibility for where you are and where you're going. So self-honesty, self-initiative. You know yourself. What do you need to put in place to take the actions you need to do? So for me, right, I'll say I can't do anything else until I run. And I have to hold myself to that. So... That's step two complete. So you know what you need to put in place for yourself, correct? The final S of self-awareness is, sorry, uh, step three, which is self-accountability. And, yes? Correct, yep. Yes, self-accountability, self-responsibility. It is discipline, right? Holding yourself accountable. Guys, if I work out every other day on random days, sometimes when I feel like it, am I ever going to improve? No. So is there any point in me even working out? No. Not really, right? So it's great if you're honest with yourself. It's great if you take an initiative and you put in place an action plan. But it means nothing if you don't hold yourself, yourself accountable to your goals. Yourself accountable to what you said you want to do. Yourself accountable to knowing what you needed to do to not rob your future self of your goals. Are you going to rob yourself, your future self of your goals? Yes. Yes? <laughs> what about now, though? No? Before this talk, would you? After this talk, will you? Okay. We'll see. I want you to prove everyone wrong, right? Because a lot of people are going to think that Nah, uh, you know, this talk was good and it made you feel good and you were motivated, but then you're going to let your emotions tell you that you can hang out one more time, where you can give up on that last lap, where you can blame your coach or someone else or other, right? So you're responsible for holding yourself accountable to the goals that you've set for yourself. So those right there, that's the three S's of self-awareness, and that's kind of wrapping up what I'm talking about here. I know I grilled you guys pretty good. Um... But I do very much appreciate all the support and attention. So before I wrap up these last couple things, you can click the next slide. I want to, who wants more free stuff? Who would like free stuff? Who does a little free stuff? Who would also like to maybe learn more about this, the other four steps of the process, and uh, have access to information that can help you better learn and grow as you run into your temporary soccer art problems and obstacles? Who would like that? Okay, well, what I talked about today were the three S's of self-awareness. If you guys go to perfectsoccerskills.com slash AASP, I do a weekly show called the Ask a Soccer Pro Show where you can join live and get your specific questions asked and answered on the show. 
I also put all the library plays up, so just like we talked about the three S's of self-awareness, I break them down and I talk about that and many other things every single week. So that is free um, information for you to help you get to where it is, wherever it is that you want to go. So um, it's not necessary, but it's helpful and it's great to remind yourself going on. So that's the first thing for free that I'm giving away there. The second would be the next slide. And uh, if you go to perfectsoccerskills.com slash giveaway, and you guys can thank Bill for this. We'll be giving away, we, I do weekly soccer giveaways similar to this. So you can sign up there and uh, enter to win on a regular basis. I do different things like ask you guys questions and you get the answer. And uh, everything all over the place. We've got copies of FIFA to sign jerseys to meet and greets and stuff like that as well too. So you can thank Bill for that. And then the final, the final thing as well too is um, if you go over to... Uh, perfectsoccerskills.com slash book. You guys definitely need to thank Bill here, but uh, because him bringing me in for to speak with you guys today, uh, he's covered the cost to make sure to get you guys. I didn't have the book. I forgot to bring the book, but I have a book for you that um, you guys will all get free digital access to, which will walk you through the nine keys to soccer success, building mentality and maintaining that moving forward. So if you guys give Bill a round of applause. <laughs> Any other questions? 
Well, you guys got me? Anybody? Yep. Knowing that you're good enough 
but the people ahead of you aren't giving you the opportunity. But that still doesn't mean that you don't abandon you can do it when you have a problem. If you work on enough problems, you'll gain enough experience to see and they're in control of itself and see the mistakes you actually make. But you don't know that you're making mistakes in the moment. How could you? The only time you know you made a mistake is once you can look back and see if you want where you want it to be. Right? So, any other questions? Why well, you guys got me? Anybody? Yep.
to stick to when starting up, when playing, right? Like, there was no guarantee that that was gonna work for me. I took a huge risk in doing that, and the reason I took that risk was because I would have been okay if my soccer career ended at any point in time. That's why I'm here. I had that mentality. So I knew I was risking everything every single time I stepped on the field and I approached with that because like the question she asked here, what's the hardest? Knowing that you're good enough, but the people ahead of you aren't giving you the opportunity. But that still doesn't mean that you don't abandon your principles. What we've talked a lot today about is principles. And for me, I said I would rather not play soccer ever again than change how I want to play the game. But many players who take that mentality don't make it here. So I want you to fully understand that when you're when you're getting going, right? Yep, right there. No, I wouldn't say the reason I'm doing it is because I have mental mental trouble personally. I just I guess for me, uh, my sister is extremely creative, like probably the most gifted, like creatively gifted person I've ever met in my entire life. But she doubted her own creativity, and it confused me. I didn't understand because I was looking. And I said. I can't do what you can do. So, like, that's ridiculously valuable. Why don't you believe that to be true for yourself? So that's kind of why I set out on that entire, that's probably what really sparked it and set me out on trying to figure that out. And in doing so, I realized that a lot of it was mentality for most people in general. And we needed to find solutions that work for everybody because when you're speaking to an entire group at, at the time, right, everyone's at different points in time mentally. Um, Maturity-wise, and other. So uh, that's why I developed this. Gotcha. So, you toss it. Yeah. It's a good question. Uh, we'll take. Let's say we'll do two more, two more questions here, and then um, everyone else. We've got some other stuff. Here. Yeah. Would never. Would you say about it? Speak up. The most important S. Self-honesty is important, but you can get there eventually if you're just holding yourself accountable to stuff. Because if you're working hard for long enough and it's not working, you're going to have to ask yourself some tough questions, right? But you, uh, I think a mistake a lot of young people make, and here's uh, another thing that we'll talk about real quick because I need to give you that context because I feel it would be unfair if I didn't. So I uh, break it down into four steps. You've got information, knowledge, experience, wisdom, Okay. So when you start out and you're seeing something new, like I'm giving you new information, you've never heard it before, right? So you might not know what to focus on. But when I, I give you two pieces of information and I make that connection for you, or help you see the connection, you now have knowledge, okay? The problem with young people, and people in general, from my experience and perspective, is they think that knowing something means something. Knowing something doesn't mean anything. Most people say knowledge is power. I don't believe that that's true. I think. Uh, Applied knowledge, uh, applying knowledge correctly is power or powerful, right? So having knowledge means nothing, and this is very difficult for young people because you guys have always had access to the internet. You have a question, you put it in Google, it gives you the answer, right? You want food, Uber Eats, here it comes, right? So you don't, you don't have a concept and reference of what patience is because the world has never forced you to be patient. I was in a world where I had to sit in the car for 15 hours driving to Montana, making games in my mind, looking at stuff along the way. So if you're a little bit older, you understand what that is, right? So there's experiences that I have that actually are to my advantage today that are to your disadvantage now because you actually have to train yourself to do that. You have to go sit somewhere for 15 hours knowing that that's why you're doing it so you can get better, okay? So there are advantages and disadvantages. And knowledge doesn't mean anything if not applied. You have to apply it. You apply knowledge, you get experience. And when you have experience, then you can look back Self-honesty, self self-initiative, self-accountability. So, I like that. Um, and then, let's see. Back top right corner. <laughs> so I can, so just like I told you the process, I'll tell you step one. Finding trash talk. <laughs> see, now I'm giving away my secrets. Okay. So, to fight trash talk, you have to take what the person used and use it against them. So anytime someone says anything about how stupid you are, you say, yeah, I'm stupid. And you're talking to a stupid guy. So what's it say about you? 